Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. So I'm on today with my favorite real estate broker, and that's Anthony Culp. And although I'm a real estate broker, I don't practice real estate, but he sure does. And he does it all over South Florida. But we're trying to pick topics that are unusual. And there's no one, I always brag about you, Anthony, any question that people don't understand in real estate, whether it's if they can have their dogs come into the condos, what you know what to talk about. So this morning, you said you wanted to talk about people, boomers, or people who are moving to rural areas. Why is that? Retirees. We, we never think about people moving to rural areas after they retire. We always think of people downsizing and moving to a city. And there's people who just don't want to live in a city. They like a small town feel. They, like to, they don't like traffic. Uh, they just like a little more peace and quiet. So, um, and a lot of people do it for cost. Cost of living is much cheaper. Um, but with that, you have to be careful. I mean, you don't want to retire, move from an apartment or a condo into a single family home and have a, a pretty much a fixed income. And then if something should happen like a roof or a foundation problem, that could take a, a big chunk of principal out of uh, your investments, which then you would have less monthly income coming in. Well, we just have Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay Riker is watching, and she's I know who she is. She's a fantastic woman, and I think that she would appreciate this a lot because, you know, she, she lives down in the, uh, well, she lives in our area in Boca Raton, but I want to continue. So would you say a place like Okeechobee or Port St. Lucie, is that rural? I don't know. Well, Port St. Lucie may not be anymore. Well, once you get outside any kind of city limits and you're just living in the county, most people understand you have cities, you have townships, and then you have the county. And you're you're ruled by the county laws and, and what their restrictions are. Well, the taxes are less in a rural oh. community, aren't they? Oh, tax. Everything is less. Taxes are less. Your car insurance is less. Homeowner's insurance is less. Your health insurance is less in most cases. Um, typically, even shopping is less. If you go to a Publix in a rural area, a can of peas may be 89 cents. Oh, I didn't know. They oh, changed yeah. the price? Of... Well, because their, their rent for the land is so much cheaper. Uh -huh. So if you have a strip center in the, middle of, in the middle of Boca, it's going to be a lot more than a strip center that's out in a rural area. So oh, you're telling me something that I'm going to share with you then. It's funny. When I drive all over South Florida, I can get gas cheaper in certain areas if they're, they're in a little hokey place That's right. <laughs> is That's because right. they know what, who, what their customers can afford, right. right? So should I drive somewhere else to do my grocery shopping? <laughs> well, you have to add in what it costs in gas yeah, yeah, I know. and I'm your kidding. time okay. you know, if your working time is important. All right, so the house, the, the apartment, the condo, whatever you're buying is going to be less expensive to right. begin with, right? Well, a lot of people don't think that there are condominiums or apartments in rural areas. And in South Florida, trailer parks are also a great uh, way to go. Absolutely. You, you can buy, you know, a 1,500 square foot double wide in a beautiful park and only have maybe four or $500 a month park rent. The, 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 um, if they're, we call them manufactured homes. We don't call right. them trailers anymore. Right. Because these, if you go to a manufactured home site and see what these homes look like, I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous homes, uh, and may only have to pay four or $500 a month for your lot rent but you get a bunch of amenities, security, and you know, trailer parks aren't the dirty little, you yeah. know, place you see on TV. I mean, these are beautiful parks. They do uh, background checks on everybody who lives there, including income, and uh, you know, they're, they're, it's a great option to live. And you see, you see a lot of them in rural areas. All right, but you're really, you're a senior, you know, you're a real estate broker. Can you actually sell? If someone's listening to this and they say, okay, I want to call Anthony Culp and he'll find me a manufactured home. Will you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you ever done that? Oh, I was from Delaware. When I first started selling real estate, half of the things I sold were manufactured homes in parks. That's amazing to me. Now, yeah. they're not new necessarily. They're, you know, they're... We would sell them. They were from, built in the 60s, but people would remodel them. They put on additions. I sold manufactured homes. You... It was a whole house built around a manufactured home. <laughs> now, see, this is all such new. Yeah. That's what you, every time you come on the radio show, we go through this. Yeah. So this is a good point that you just brought up. But I also wanted to uh, ask you about the um, the type of housing. So the, you said that they have, of course, they're always single-family homes, and that's what I think of in rural. Right. But you're telling me they're apartments? There's, there's 
apartments, condominiums, townhouses. Uh, you have single family homes and developments that the development uh, may cut the grass and everything for you, which is a great option for somebody who's retired, especially if you like to travel. So if you're going to be gone for two or three weeks, you know, somebody's cutting the grass and, you know. Um, well, I was thinking there are probably a lot of places as we go up further north, maybe even further south, way mm -hmm. south, where you can get beautiful environments on lakes Absolutely. and on places, right? I mean, well, that's I'm, one of the reasons why people will move to a rural, a rural area. <clears throat> they like to bike. They like to hike. They, you know, they just like that small town feel. And, you know, in the northeast, you have a lot of people who move out of the city into a rural area. Uh, it also depends... Uh, rural area like Vermont has the highest amount of people who live in a rural area and the reason is they don't have a lot of cities where New Jersey has a lot of cities and has the least amount the uh, in the south they have the highest amount per state which averages about 28 percent because they're larger states they have more agriculture and the better climate so that's and for developers it's much cheaper to go out and buy a piece of property that's in a rural area and develop it than it is to try to build something to do an infill where they're tearing down maybe a warehouse and putting in a development. Well, now you've just piqued my interest in something. I just returned from a press trip that was in Texas, and it was in a small, well, I don't know if it's a small town now. It's, it's small, but it's called Fredericksburg, and it's right outside mm -hmm. of San, um, San Antonio. The LBJ Ranch is there, and it is a small town, though, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's these small towns have one street it's called Main Street, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and they have a little. They have their antique shops and they have their restaurants and all. People seem so happy and right. friendly, and that's kind of what you're talking right. about, isn't it? Absolutely. And when you know, when you're looking for to move to a rural area, I have some suggestions that you know you're used to going down the street to the Publix and buying something or. You know, and in a rural area, that's not the case. When I lived in Delaware, I would go 45 minutes twice a week to, to socialize at the Moose Lodge. And so when you're moving, things that I recommend is, one, be near a major highway. Be able to get onto a major highway where, you know, it can get you where you want to go. Um, check the, you know, we're, we're senior citizens, we're boomers. I mean, make sure they have a good hospital and uh, medical services there. Um, you want to make sure that there is shopping and you know your everyday needs that you buy as uh, we retire we seem to go and shop more we shop for every individual meal now instead of going shopping once a week for for you know what you want um you know w community centers. is there parks and recreation is there a gym is, you know okay you know. so as a real estate broker though you will you especially i don't know about others well, then they can ask you the questions and you'll show them that. You'll, Absolutely. You'll... Uh, you know, again, it's what is your lifestyle? You know, are you moving to a rural area because it's more affordable? And that's great. And if you want a quality of life and, it, you know, uh, have to and pay less for housing, but you don't want to isolate yourself. It's no fun living in a rural area if you can't share it with your family and friends. Uh, so, you know, you want to take everything into consideration. You want to make sure the crime is not bad. Um, but you have to be careful looking at crime statistics and don't just look at it and think, oh, there's a lot of crime there. In uh, rural areas, you know, you see a lot of outlets because it's cheap. The, the ground is cheap it's for them to develop and build an outlet. So if there's a lot of outlets, you're going to have a lot of petty crime because they're shoplifting. Hmm. Uh, but there may not be the, the rate of violent crime there may be very low. If you do see a high rate of violent crime, you have to check because in poorer areas, there is violent crime. So you, you really have to look through it. You just can't glance at it and say, oh, there's a lot of crime. Well, I lived here in South Florida a long time, and I remember at one point the whole area around Palmyra, where right. your specialty, was pretty much far. Right. It, I don't know if I would have called that rural, but right. it wasn't really downtown. Right. <laughs> but over a period of time, when enough people like the quality of life, it mm -hmm. turns into be more... Yeah. It get rid of that. So what should someone do? Then they should think about moving out to another place. Well, you know, that doesn't happen overnight in most cases. It's, you know, we, we usually go through building spurts. Like all of a sudden rates will be low uh, for whatever reason, you know, what housing is selling and builders will buy land and they'll develop or they'll in, infill. Where I grew up in a really nice suburban area. It was one of the first uh, suburbs after World War II, a uh, planned suburb. 
and it was a great place to live. But when I go back now, every piece of <laughs> empty wooded area is now developed on. Uh, I haven't lived there for over 25 years. So when I went back in the spring, I was shocked. And then I just heard the largest piece of undeveloped ground was just sold and now is going to be developed. So, uh, and as you go a little further out into some of the areas like um, from Pennsylvania, originally Lancaster, Pennsylvania was, you know, we, we would go out there for the day. And the Amish drive. were in Lancaster, right, right? right? You saw horse and buggies and everything else. And now it's, it's very developed. So, um, but that doesn't happen overnight. That takes years and years for that to happen. Well, now maybe what people should be doing is they should contact you. They live and maybe buy a piece that they'll move to later, and it would be yeah. an investment. Again, it's what are you going to do? You know, you're not going to sit in your house all day. Um, you know, you have to live near what you do. Uh, you don't want to live, you know, 50 minutes, an hour away for something you're going to do, you know, three times a week. Now, if you don't mind driving 45 or 50 minutes, it's no big deal. I mean, when I lived in Delaware, it was very rural in Delaware where I lived. So for me to drive 45 minutes was not a big deal. Um, one of the things people, um, you know, that they complain about when they move into a rural area is, my friends won't come and see me, it's too far out. And as we get older, you know, you have to adjust your lifestyle when you're entertaining. And uh, a lot of people like to have dinner parties. Well, when you're asking people 50 plus to come out to a rural area, um, eat, drink, and then drive back on roads or whatever it is, it's a lot. It's a lot for anybody because at night is the most tiring part of the day. That's when you want to go to sleep. So you have to change it up a little bit and have brunch instead. Oh, that's a good point. Or I was thinking you're going to say buy a home or buy something that has an extra bedroom and have them stay. Well, oh, that's exactly. I mean, make it comfortable for guests to stay. But if you have brunch, yeah. people will make it an outing for the day and they're going to come out. They're going to, it's a, brunch is a more relaxed uh, time of day, you know, if you're retired and entertain more on weekends than during the week. And that's why theaters have matinees. Exactly. Yeah, because then that's a very, very good point. Uh, you're making me think about something, too, because a lot of the small towns don't have something. For instance, I lived in Huntsville, Texas many years ago, and when I came there, uh, they did not have a senior center. Right. And right. I helped start a senior center there, but they did have a university. Uh -huh. So that's the other thing, that sometimes these rural areas do have universities, right. and I never understood that. Right. Do you know why they do that? And the other thing you have to remember, too, they may not have a senior center, but they have a VFW. And the VFW may meet all of those needs that you're looking for in a senior center. And because, get people, if they weren't a veteran, still go to a VFW? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. They have all, you know, they always have a fair or something or, you know, and if it's not VFW, it's a women's club or it's the Moose Lodge or it's, you know, there's something. There's always some sort of uh, social organization that's in small towns. I mean, that's why they're there. All right. So if someone is becomes a client of yours and you're taking them around, Will you know all those things ahead of time, knowing that I shouldn't even ask you that question, but I know you would do that? Well, typically, I'm based mainly out of Broward County, right. but I do Southern Palm and Northern Dade. So if they're looking for something like this, um, we can only go so far west unless they're willing to live in the Everglades. <laughs> right, so with the snakes. So what I will do is I'll do research, and I'll find the right person for them. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay, that's a very good point. So you have people who will help them in different areas. Well, it's funny. I'm really a big city person. I grew mm -hmm. up in Miami Beach, and I like it, except in the afternoon on I-95, mm -hmm. I take all these other small little roads. But I remember when um, Jupiter was very small. Yeah. I lived yeah. up in Jupiter Island at one time, and Jupiter and Hope Sound, that was just little yeah. poopy places. Yeah. But go up to Jupiter now, my gosh, it yeah. has everything, right? Yeah, no. So that's the other thing. It's if you, Even if you go there, Mm -hmm. It will eventually, as you said, over a period of time. But right. I think, and I hate to talk in real estate about investment, but you can now make money. If you go to a place and right. it grows, you now are going to be part of that growth. Absolutely. And the other thing with investment with real estate, it's not a five-year investment. You know, people in the past have bought their homes. They lived there for 20, 30 years, and it had gone up. You know, they, they, I think my mother paid twenty eight thousand dollars for <laughs> right, her house, that's right? And you know, it's selling for two hundred fifty thousand. And if it was all fixed up, it would have been three hundred and fifty thousand. So, but um, how long did she well, live she there? She lived there. It was forty years. See, that that's she lived it. There. Yeah, 
And that's the investment you want to make. You want to pay that house off. It's not a credit card. You know, don't get a home equity line of credit to go on a cruise. You're going to be paying for that cruise for 30 years. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Right. You know? But but that's a very good point you brought up, that you can buy something, and actually you it will go up in value. So it's like an investment while mm -hmm. you're living there. Exactly. Especially exactly. if you're in a place that maybe isn't the big city yet, because if you're in a big city, you're going to right. pay those big city prices. Right, right. So what um, what typically are these usually older people because they're not working so they can go out to a rural area? Exactly. It, it may be somebody's dream. They've always wanted to own their own little piece of property and not have you know not live in a HOA or a condo and not have somebody tell them what to do. Uh, it could be somebody who likes to work on cars and they want to have their own garage or you know they just like a quieter lifestyle. They've worked hard maybe in an office their whole life and. They just want to, you know, get off the grid for a little while. When you use the word rural, I keep thinking about farms. Well, it, there's there's a, a happy medium between farms and, and the city. Uh, in uh, Dania, they have areas where you have to uh, have a minimum of five acres. It's horse country. So if you want to live in Dania, you want to live... Uh, like that, then you have to have five acres, and you have to maintain five acres. Huh. But like I said, one of the things you have to remember is, do you have the money to put a new roof on the house, which may cost $15,000? And if you don't have that money, that's going to come out of your investments. And if you take the principal out of your investment, well, that's $15,000 you're no longer living off of, and you're not gaining the interest from. So you have to be very careful, because your fixed income is fixed. Ten years from now, your fixed income might not be covering all your living expenses. So you have to be careful to make sure that you have enough for a major expenditure. Not to say in a condominium you won't get a special assessment from time to time, but typically you know when that's coming. A leaky roof, you you know, it happens one day and you have to have the roofer out there on the next, and you might not be able to plan for that. Well, I just want to tell you that my guest is Anthony Culp, and Anthony is, uh, is you know, every time he comes on, I learned so much. I mean, I've told you I've been a real estate broker for many years, but um, over the last probably 25 years, I've not practiced any of that. But all I have to do is get Anthony here, and darn if he doesn't tell me everything I want to know. So let me give you some phone numbers. If you're interested in buying any kind of real estate, whether it's big city or rural, yeah. talk to Anthony. His phone number is 954-815-9048. That's 954-815-9048. 9048 and read his article in Boomer Times because he always has something interesting to talk about. Here's the one in our past December issue was retiring single or without children. I mean, that was right. interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we, you know, that's a different story too. Exactly. Most people that are retiring single uh, or without kids, uh, they don't live out in rural areas. I mean, the whole idea is to downsize and, you know, get into the city or more community or have you know check in with somebody as you're going in and out of the building I mean you it's always good to be seen every day so if something should happen you know somebody will say well where's Jane you know I haven't seen Jane let's I mean, we have to check on Jane to see if Jane's okay so uh, most single people won't move out to a rural area but well I'm just thinking about something every time you come here my the lights go up and uh, I've been thinking about what the Golden Girls were right. and thinking about buying at some point, if I could afford to buy some homes, three-bedroom, four-bedroom mm -hmm. homes, but I couldn't afford it here. Now I'm saying, you know what? When you're in the, in, if you're a golden girl, you're not out of that house very much. We could afford a home in a rural area, and people, that's something I've, boy, you just yeah. get my brain going now. I'm getting now. back into developing again and building uh, homes. Aha! Uh -huh. So I've been looking around, and I uh, was talking to another developer, and, and uh, he said, oh, I have 60 lots on the other side of the state. So I said, oh, let me look at these lots. This is great. They're all next to each other. I can build several. It's on the west side, time. west coast. Right, uh, outside Tampa. So I looked it up. And I, and I started looking at the houses that were for sale in there, and I said, I can't build a house for this price. And the houses I was looking at were really nice houses in the mid twos, big houses with pools and a nice sized lot and, you know, paved road and sidewalks. And, uh, but it's, you know, 20 or 30 minutes outside the city limits. And, uh, you know, for me, it didn't work because I would have to buy the lot and then put, in, you know, it's on septic and you have to learn how to live with septic and stuff like that. So, um, 
you know, if you are going to share a house with somebody, you know, this may be an area that you look for. And if and if you're looking to build a house and you're planning on sharing it with whether it's friends, you know, bringing somebody in or family, you might want to look for a certain floor plan, like a, what they call split floor plan. The master's on one side, the other bedrooms are on the other side of the house with the living room, dining room, and kitchen in the center. And it gives you a little bit more privacy and it, it works better uh, for people. Whether, like I said, whether it's a friend that you're living with or, or, or kids. Yeah, well this is, but now you see, I got discouraged thinking about doing some sort of real estate or buying a home because they were very expensive and mm -hmm. And I thought everyone would say, you have four people living there, everybody would buy. So if it's $200,000, everyone has to put in 50000 and then put in some sort I of... I would recommend if you if some, if some somebody was going to do something like that, it would yes. be better to have one person as the owner. And the rest of the people were roommates. Because, uh, say, something happens to Margaret. Yeah. And Margaret has right. to move into a home. Exactly. How does she get her equity out? Yes. I mean, I've sold to friends and to multiple couples because I, you know, I've always sold in a, a vacation area. And I would recommend to them you should have an exit plan because if somebody should move or they can't afford it anymore, it's a it's a hardship on the other people. Do they have to sell? Maybe you know, maybe they they're doing better. So, one of the plans that I recommend to people is. Okay, if somebody has to can no longer live here and has to sell, the people who have to buy them out should get it for 10% less the appraised value because now they have to take on a bigger mortgage and more expenses and everything else, which they never planned on. I um, love having you come on the show. I mean, you are, you're Mr. Encyclopedia. We don't have encyclopedias anymore, but... but um, we have but, Google. Yeah, right, Google. That's true. And I have Siri who gets me everywhere, right? right. But um, I just want to share everyone... Anthony Culp is a person, you know, he's not the typical real estate broker. So everybody seems to be selling real estate nowadays. They're all new little real estate agents. But Anthony is it comes from a construction background and as a builder, and he's also very nice. And you could just hear from the radio show. He just, you know, so many things, and I have so much confidence in you. But Thank you. I, I think your advice now on the on buying a home and then renting it out to other people, but mm -hmm. I want to go back to that. What do you think of that idea of going to a rural area, mm -hmm. because it would be less money, right. as long as it has some of the things you said, hospital, right. you know, medical facilities and shopping, and but it just has, you know, not a lot of other things. Right. One of the, thing you have to, one of the things that you have to remember as well, uh, for some people, a 10-minute drive is a long drive. For other people, an hour is no big deal. So... You know, the further out you go, the less expensive it is. Uh, there are some lots in the center of the state that sell for you know six or seven thousand dollars, where the people had bought them in two thousand five and two thousand six, thinking you know they hit the jackpot, and they just never took off. Now they're starting to climb back up in value, and um, but that's very inexpensive for a lot because. Oh yeah. But you, you remember, you have to bring in electric. You have to do septic. You have oh, to drill I see. well. You, yeah. You know, there's a lot of there's expenses to building a house. Yeah. And, uh, you well, know. we're gonna have to continue this with you. I just want to tell you that Terry uh, Diaz is on, and she's a fantastic woman. I know who she is. She's watching you. But thank you for coming today. You always brighten my morning, and you tell me things I didn't know. So before I do anything, if I'm gonna buy a house for. To, to put together this senior package, I'm certainly mm -hmm. going to have you help me because you, yeah. you know all the pitfalls, and that's the, it's the pitfalls. Yeah. So that's wonderful, and thank you, Anthony, for, for being here with us this morning. Thanks for having me, and happy holidays to everybody. Right.